the dynamic characters of Mahabharata comes alive on the 34th Sharjah International Book Fair. The renowned author Gurucharan Das will be talking about his book, The Difficulty of Being Good. Why did I write The Difficulty of Being Good? Uh, you know, in India Unbound, I was the first person in India who wrote about the fact that India was going to rise. Right. It was the first book that predicted the rise of India. Right. And when, I, when it came out, people just thought, oh my God, what's he talking right. about? But India obliged by rising. <laughs> India actually rose, and and certainly we became the second fastest growing economy in the world. And right now, we have in the last the year, we've become the fastest growing economy, major economy in the world. So certainly, I felt. Um, that, you know, it was good. I had predicted it, it had happened. Uh, but it didn't make me happy because I saw a bigger problem. So I realized that the prosperity was spreading in India. But there was a problem of governance. There was, for everything you, every interaction with the state was somehow flawed. It involved, involved some kind of corruption or delay. And so it was, to me, um, the whole issue of corruption had two dimensions. One was the dimension, institutional dimension, meaning that, take the example of a school teacher. One out of four school teachers in government schools don't show up in India. But nothing happens to them. So if you start, if you punish the teacher or got sacked the teacher mm -hmm. who did not show up, you would get people coming to work. Right. But what about the teaching? Would they teach with inspiration? Would they say that I'm preparing the next generation? Mm -hmm. And so um, I realized there was a moral dimension mm -hmm. the, to the corruption problem. Okay. So there's an institutional dimension, and that I covered in my book, India Grows at Night. Yes. I didn't, by the way, finish the full sentence in the title. The full sentence is, India grows at night when the government sleeps. <laughs> I thought I thought it would be too I thought it'd be too insulting. <laughs> she she said that she liked the titles of my books, and I was tempted to write India grows at night when the government sleeps, but then I thought you know maybe I'll just leave it at India grows at night. And uh, so some people can't figure out what does it mean? Am I talking about IT people or something? <laughs> anyway, so the, it was a moral problem, problem of dharma. And that is why I decided to go back to the Mahabharat. Because my grandmother had told me that the Mahabharat is obsessed with the, with the idea of dharma. And so, now dharma is a word that, frankly, uh, most people have forgotten in India. Right. Uh, they don't even know what it means, English-speaking people. But 95% of villagers in India, you use the word dharma, mm -hmm. and they will understand it. Right. Now, it's, it's a confusing word, because it can mean justice, it can mean law, it can mean goodness, it can mean virtue, it can mean duty. Mm -hmm. So depending on the context, the meaning can change. But um, the, the discussion in the Mahabharat really opens up the full dimension of dharma. Um, 
You know, most of us know the story of the Mahabharat. It's a story of two cousins, sets of cousins, the Pandavas and the Kauravas. And there's a rivalry for the throne. The Kauravas are supposed to be the bad guys and the Pandavas are supposed to be the good guys. And to contain that rivalry, they, uh, the, the kingdom is split. The good part is gone, given to the bad guys and the bad part is given to the good guys. But the good guys are all hardworking people like these fine people from Sharja. <laughs> and they create, they work hard, they build a, a beautiful capital, they make, they are very good warriors, they make alliances, and so they become very powerful. And they have Arjuna on their side, who's the greatest warrior mm -hmm. of the time. When Duryodhan finds out who's the eldest son of the bad guys, Kauravas, how powerful they've become, he grows envious. Now, so one of the first things, so I, my, my book kind of stops there. After the session, and we got a chance to catch I up with the renowned author, Mr. Guricharan Das, for an interview. Here is an excerpt. Thank you so much, sir, for being here. Uh, so my first question is, um, in an age of technology, uh, social media has become sort of the competitive platform for individuals to show sort of their self-worth and self-victories. How does an individual maintain humility in certain situations? Well, that's of course a problem that human beings, all human beings have that problem. And they had it before social media and they have it after social media. I don't think social media, in fact, is a very good thing because it gives people a chance to express themselves. Uh, many people can now showcase their writing, their art through, through the internet. And, uh, but uh, humility, of course, you know, um, my name, as you know, uh, it, until the age of three, my name was Ashok Kumar, and then my grandmother suspected that I got my, that name because they thought my mother, she thought my mother was secretly in love with a Bollywood actor, Ashok Kumar. So she took me to her guru. She placed me at his feet, and the guru gave me a name, Guru Charandas. So overnight, I was transformed from the prince of happiness to... Uh, Ashok Kumar to the humble servant of the feet of the Guru, which is all about humility. <laughs> uh, sir, um, you talked about moral uh, ri uh, rise in India and you know degradation. Now, if you look at the condition of India, you can see a lot of moral degradation that's going around. So, do you think is there a link between positive or negative link between moral de uh, rise and the economic rise? No, I think, uh, frankly, human beings have always had problems, they've been flawed, and uh, they've always had moral problems. And economic rise has got nothing to do with it. Uh, if anything, I think if there, as there is more abundance, there's less fight, fighting. And so as people get more and more prosperous, I think that uh, maybe they won't fight over the little things, maybe they'll fight over the big things. Uh, so, and for my final question is, uh, you mentioned moral clarity, which is something that is really important. Uh, how does an individual, a college student in specific, achieve moral clarity? Yeah, well, you see, in fact, that's what I was talking about in my book, The Difficulty of Being Good, that beware of a person who says he has moral clarity. You know, George W. Bush said he had moral clarity and took the American people for a war in Iraq. Moral clarity is a very dangerous thing, and we should. That's why the Mahabharat is a very good uh, antidote because Mahabharat is telling you that um, uh, dharma 
is sukshma, is subtle, and therefore we have to think about it. It's not black and white, you know? And so, uh, uh, of course, I mean, we should all, I mean, we all have a certain amount of in instinct for doing the right thing. But it can be cultivated when we are young. At the age of three, the moral sense comes into the child. You know, there's a famous story of uh, the psychologist Piaget. He took, he had, there was a cake and it was a birthday party of three-year-olds. He took the cake. He cut, there were 10 children. He cut the cake equally, except to one child, he gave double the size. And all the children knew something was wrong. Their moral, they were morally outraged. The sense of fairness, justice had been wounded at the age of three. So that's the age at which we have to uh, train children. And that's how you get better moral. Thank you so much, sir. The fifth day of Sharjah International Book Fair comes to an end with the session of Guru Charan Das, where he talked about his book, Indian Economics and Politics. With camera person Gautami Kartwe, this is Suha Sabit reporting for Manipal Dubai TV.